Listen to the words of that video. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes. We're supposed to be different folks. And when people look at us, believe in yourself. Self-confidence. Without that skill, and I use the word skill intentionally, without that skill, we are useless. I use the definition of self-confidence to be the ability or the belief to believe in yourself to, to accomplish any task, no matter the odds, no matter the difficulty, no matter the adversity. The belief that you can accomplish it. I use the word skill because I believe it can be trained. Repetition, repetition, repetition. There's no magic button. Get out there. Do what you want to do and do not accept no. We all have this negative self-talk that goes in our head. Guess what? There's enough people that are telling us we can't do it. That we're not good enough. Why do we want to tell ourselves that? We know for a fact that thoughts influence actions. Why do we want to say that negative self-talk to ourselves? We need to get our own self-affirmations. Muhammad Ali, what was his self-affirmation? I am the greatest. I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. That is my affirmation. If I don't say it, if I don't believe it, no one else will. Get away from the people who will tear you down. There's enough of that. Muhammad Ali, I am the greatest. There is no one better than me. I'm gonna show you how great I am. I got a question for you guys. What did you wanna be when you grew up? Um, it's something we ask kids all the time. And I asked this to twin eight-year-old girls in a homeless shelter waiting room once. What do you want to be when you grow up? And they said a worker at the grocery store. And that's when the other twin said, no, the hardware store pays more. Now, these were two kids, eight years old, remember, these were two kids that could unscramble the word zygomorphic. And their life dream, that big goal, that big aspiration they had for themselves, was to work at the hardware store because it paid more than the grocery store. I told them what I thought was the truth. And that was they could be whatever they wanted. The world was theirs. First off, I really think believing in yourself is number one. You know, believing you can be something even when you're not at the moment. Even before I go to bed, I visualize things I want in my life. Second is never giving up. You know, a lot of people, things happen, you know, bad in life and um, they, that's where, the, that's where it ends for them, for their dreams or, you know, even have a normal life and you know, they just let things go downhill. I mean, that could have happened for any of us, but I really think the main thing is never to give up, no matter how bad things seem at the time. I like to surround myself with positive people and people who have, you know, dreams and aspirations to be something more than the average, you know, people. I want a lot of things in life and I'm nowhere near where I want to be. I still, you know, working hard every day to, to have the things I want and look the way I want and and be happy and all that kind of stuff. You probably woke up to an alarm clock, not an opportunity clock. Can you do it? 
Do you believe you can do it? Will it work? Is it worth it? And it's all in how you see it. Really, it's all in how you see it. It's your paradigm. It's how you communicate to others and how you communicate to yourself. And some of us get stuck there. We're stuck. I'll do it myself. I don't need you. But when you perceive choice, you perceive motivation. You're more motivated. So the deal is, for yourself, sit back and reflect. Be mindful of the choices you have. And talk about being a success seeker rather than a failure avoider. It's all how you talk, how you communicate to yourself and to others. learn from each other. We need to have the humility to accept feedback and the courage to speak up. And we need to help each other feel self-motivated. How? Given the perception of competence, teach him about consequences drive us, you know? Let him perceive choice and let him know it's community. We're all in this together and we need each other. The story is a story that started under the iron with a stupid kid who didn't have the ability to fucking read very well, was able to overcome a lot of things. It's not because I'm better than anybody, it's just because I put in the work. And it's about you guys putting in your work. Not reading what other people are fucking putting up on Facebook and the tweets people are putting out and the mean and vicious bullshit that goes on. You have to focus in on your work, the work that you need to do to make yourself better. If you want to be good, then there's a lot of people out there who can show you how to be good. But if you want to be great, being great is going to have is something that comes from within. It's something that you have to build upon over years and years and years, and you can't listen to other people. Sacrificing for the unknown, doing things that you're not sure what the result may be. At the end of the tunnel, if you put your heart and your passion in it, who knows where it will lead you. It's not just about the, the weights, it's not just about doing something underneath a fucking barbell. The goal is to get stronger. But the goal isn't to get stronger and bigger externally only. It has to be internal as well. You have to have the drive and determination to make yourself a better person each and every day if you really want to take this thing as far as you can. You just want to do like a 600 pound deadlift and you're happy with that and that makes you excited and that's cool but i hope i hope you're enjoying the journey and i hope you're understanding uh, what it means to actually get better how much hard work goes into that
guys to understand that it's not about the program that you're on. It's not about steroids. It's not about supplements. It's not always just about your diet. All those things can be a factor. But if you want to be a fucking savage, if you want to take control of your life, and you want to become a champion, you want to kick ass in life, you are going to have to surround yourself with like-minded people. Take these lessons that you're learning, waking up early, eating things that you don't necessarily like, training like an animal, making yourself do cardio to be in a certain weight class, making these different sacrifices that you have to make in order to be great. You know, not going out drinking with your buddies and not dicking around and really trying to take this serious and take it to the next yeah. level. If you want to be good at something, then go ahead and put a little bit of effort into it. But that's not going to cut it for being great. If you want to be great at something, if you want to kick ass at something, it's going to take the greatest effort that you can possibly think of. Come on! Come on, Come on then. Run! To grow the individual will to become something, you must get comfortable with fear and failure. They must be your best friends. They're the only one that moves that needle of life. Every hero you guys had was called an idiot, crazy, a loser. You must break society's status quo. Status quo is normality. It's, it's alive but not living. It's death on a stick, guys. One person with a belief overrides thousands of people with just intent. I had to crawl my way. I had to lie. I had to break all the rules. How did I do it? Because I wanted it bad enough. So breaking the rules works. Because these rules are someone else's rules, not the book I wrote. I'm not living that book. Start to finish a blueprint that every single module inside of it you create, you own. Nothing subjective in there. It's all you. Luck cannot be in there. Your girlfriend can't be in there. My family can't be in there. A guy, you take a guy that can earn a dollar, forever wealthy. Because no matter what comes, he can grow it back. What is that about? The willpower, the belief, the confidence. And just like you go to the gym and you lift your muscles, right? You have to exhaust them to grow them. Perishable, use it or lose it. Your confidence must be the same way. It must be tested every single day. Safety, comfort zones are dead zones because your true potential will never be matched, guys. Will never be matched. You have to continue to push yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to take off. I'll take off in flight in a second here. You're living, man. You're living. That's the greatest high in life. Some people shoot for it. Some people snort for it. I'd rather sweat for it. To make that first step towards greatness is the hardest step. But there is one thing harder than that, my friends. It's later in life. 
As you look back on your life, the windows of opportunity has closed. Your ability is no longer present. And you think back that you could have been great. What you will do is you will bury that deep inside. You won't tell anyone that you could have been this. You will be second best to your true potential. And you'll live your life fine. But then one of your friends is going to succeed in some endeavor. And you're going to hate him for it. Because his success is a spotlight shining down on your missed opportunity. We all have the ability to do anything. There is so much power in failure because you learn so much from it. And the difference between a champion and someone who's forgotten is that a champion shows up. That's the only thing. Every day shows up, puts a, gives himself a chance to make a difference. Not sitting back, not making that step, going for it. So in that arena, we get to build things. Now I'm not talking about the body. I'm talking about the arsenal to go to war with. That arsenal are things like integrity, honor, character, discipline, sacrifice, due diligence, sweat equity, to see it through. In the gym, we build that. The difference is not the, the, the genetic code, the potential. It's a guy that's willing to get knocked down, finally tells someone fortune, stand back up, stand back up. The perseverance to see it through, the never say die attitude. And I go in there, man, and I'm just like, and I go, if I don't win, I showed up, I gave my valid effort. And tomorrow I'll do the same thing. And I'll continue to throw shit against the wall. And something will stick, which will never define me. It'll just re-motivate that my tactics work. side of pain that's the suffering and the discomfort side of pain that's why everybody raised their hands when I first asked do you have everybody ever been through pain because that hurts you remember what that felt like but then there's another side of pain that's called effort it's called glory it's called if you can find a way to push through pain, there's something greater on the other side of it. And, 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 and if you never tap into it, it's because the first time you felt it, you backed off. The first time you felt, ah, that burn. The first time you felt that, ah, it's too much. And we rationalize with ourselves to where we automatically stop. That's why a bunch of us give up so much in life so quickly. That's why kids have a problem finishing things in today's time. Because as soon as they feel a small bit of discomfort, of things ain't right, oh, they gone. I can't do it no more. See, sometimes we think the pain is what controls us, it's actually our subconscious mind. 
that if we ever tapped into that, that's what dictates most of our lives. Pain is a repetition of the psyche. Until you learn how to figure it out, until you learn how to tap it on the, tap it on the back and say, I know you there, but I'm built to deal with you. greatest pain, it ain't even about you. It's about a greater purpose. That if you can find a way to push through, that if you can find a way to not make it about you, learn to appreciate the occasional storms that come in your life. doesn't matter how much weight it is. If I'm ready mentally for it, then I'm ready. As you get older, I mean, at this point, you realize there's nothing intrinsically important or valuable about having big muscles. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. 
it's the the journey it's the process being a bodybuilder is part of me it's what i do it's what it is what i love <laughs> but i am able to put it into general a general perspective and realize its its place and its significance in comparison to other things There are mountains of sorrow that cannot move. And one way or another, we will all kneel there. Now, parts of me died early on, and that's something we can all say one way or another. So I got to redesign my life around this fact. And I tell you, it has been a liberation. Realize you can always find a shock of beauty or meaning in what life you have left. Like that snowball lasting for a perfect moment, all the while melting away. If we love such moments ferociously, then maybe we can learn to live well, not in spite of death, but because of it. Let death do what takes us not lack of imagination. What is your motive for action? What is it that drives you in your life today, not 10 years ago, or are you running the same pattern? Because I believe that the invisible force of internal drive activated is the most important thing in the world. I'm here because I believe emotion is the force of life. Explore where you are today so that you can contribute more. society thinks biography is destiny. The past equals the future. And of course it does if you live there. Decision is the ultimate power. I've had an interesting laboratory to try to answer the question of the real question, which is what's the difference in somebody's life if you look at somebody like those people that you've given everything to, like the, all the resources they say they need. You gave them not a hundred dollar computer, you gave them the best computer. You gave them love, you gave them joy, you were there to comfort them. And those people very often, and you know some of them, I'm sure, end up the rest of their life with all this love, education, money, and background, spending their life going in and out of rehab. And then you meet people that have been through ultimate pain. Psychologically, sexually, spiritually, emotionally abused. And not always, but often they become some of the people that contribute the most to society. say there's two master lessons. One is there's the science of achievement. That's how do you take the invisible and make it visible, right? How do you take what you dream about and make it happen? Whether it be your business, your contribution, society, money, whatever it is for you, your body, your family. 
But the other lesson of life that is rarely mastered is the art of fulfillment. But when it comes to fulfillment, that's an art. And the reason is it's about appreciation and it's about contribution. You can only feel so much by yourself. can happen. So my invitation to you is this. Explore your web, the web in here, the needs, the beliefs, the emotions that are controlling you for two reasons. So there's more of you to give. Yeah, achieve too. We all want to do that, but I mean give because that's what's going to fill you up. And secondly, so you can appreciate, not just understand, that's intellectual, that's mind, but appreciate what's driving other people. If nine days from now you were going to die, who would you call? What would you say? What would you do? From now on, every day, give your all, love your all. Don't let anything ever stop you.